test. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start the recording again. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric, Eric Wong, and I am the, I'm a coach here in AYSO Region 64. Uh, we will have a few other people joining us, most likely. Uh, but I, I think we'll get started. Um, <clears throat> the title of this is More Effective Communication with uh, Nonviolent Communication, and it's based on some work. That, the presentation is based on uh, one of my teachers, Mary McKenzie. I just want to point that out. She's written a book uh, that I'll, I'll give you a reference to later, but a lot of the material in the format is from her, um, and I've added my own material in as well. Uh, Nonviolent communication is really a process for building connection for effective communication through shared and universal values. Um, these universal values, they'll sometimes be called needs, I'm going to try to call them values, are, are values that we all share. And we'll go through some exercises as part of how we, uh, as part of how we learn about this. And I think we'll be breaking up into big groups uh, to have some discussions around it as well. Um, you'll see. You'll see how that works. Um, Nonviolent communication was actually invented by uh, a person who who lived here in the Bay Area. His name is um, Marshall Rosenberg. Um, his grandma was a survivor of World War II. Uh, um, she was uh, Polish and Jewish, um, and he encountered some uh, racism when he was young, and he wondered why people acted the way he did. Uh, and he, he, he had a PhD in uh, psychology and he was uh, he treated, he was a clinical psychologist and he developed this sort of very simple way to do it, um, to, to, to go through and communicate uh, with each other. Um, Satya Nardella, who is the CEO of Microsoft, thought that this was such a powerful technique that when he joined Microsoft and became CEO, he gave copies of this book to his, uh, his entire executive staff. And, uh, and you'll see from the cover of the book there, there's a lot of people who, are, who endorse this sort, of, this sort of approach as well. Uh, and the idea of nonviolence, if anybody has taken yoga, is, uh, is nonviolence towards others and towards self. And we'll, we'll go through exactly, um, rather than explain it academically, I wanna go through and, and do the practice. Um, so, <clears throat> So I think since most of us are in AYSO soccer, of our volunteer soccer organization, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to ask you to think about the qualities that you value. Um, what are the qualities that you value and what values are met through AYSO? And <clears throat> I'm gonna give you an example in a second. Um, actually, I'm actually just gonna go straight to the value. So, oh, sorry, the formatting is a little off here, but. Uh, the idea is, is that there's this, um, there are sort of these universal values that everybody shares. Um, and this is a, a set of them, it happens to be a set I like. And when I say values are universal values, these are values that I think most human beings share. And when, I, when I'm asked, what I'm really asking is this question is, is through AYSO as a volunteer, as a parent, signing your kids up, as a coach, as a referee, what values are met through your actions in AYSO? So I want to go through this exercise first. I'll, I'll explain how I do it, how I would look at it through my experience as a volunteer. So I'm a volunteer coach, um, I'm a volunteer coach instructor, and I'm a volunteer on the board. So for me, <clears throat> some of the values that are met for me through this, for volunteering through AYSO are community, you can see under interdependence in the lower right here. Um, contribution, uh, which uh, contribution, um, support. Um, for me, developing some competence and working with other people. Uh, for me, also empowerment, my personal empowerment through skills, through working with other people, uh, generating power with other people. Um, and then also through learning. Um, I learn a lot by working with other people. And uh, 
I actually get a lot of inspiration from the, the many people who volunteer and work uh, as part of AYSL, the volunteers, the kids, the parents who get their kids there every day. So what I'd actually like to do now <clears throat> is we have, let me just take a look at how many people we have right now. Uh, we have about, uh, let's see, I'm oh, sorry. We have about, oh, sorry. I'm still getting used to this interface. I have not, um, I've only used it this for a few minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop, drop, make, break us up into groups of three, three or four. And what I'd like you to do is kind of look at this, think about AYSO and think about what the values you are. And then each person will take one to two minutes to talk about it. And what I will do is we'll be in groups of, Actually, let's do, yeah, so let's do groups of three. I'm gonna do one group of two and two groups of three. I'm gonna give you one to two minutes each. I'll give you a warning after two minutes and another warning after two minutes. And then, uh, and then you'll get a, a 60 second warning before we come back. So what, like, what I'm gonna ask you to do is go into these groups. <clears throat> we'll unmute your microphones and take turns and just talk about what are the, the values that are met for you? What are the values that, that come to you for, for being an AYSO? Um, does anybody have any questions about this exercise? Uh, and by the way, I'm sorry, I should have gone through some of the mechanics of this right now. The mechanics of this are that um, when you, <clears throat> when you um, want, you'll need to unmute yourself, uh, yourself. Um, in the actual session with me, if you want to say something, in general, you're muted. You can go ahead and raise your hand and hopefully I will see that you have raised your hand or you can wave your hand at me using the video. And then I will I will unmute you, and you can speak. And this is just just for cleanliness in terms of uh, how this goes. Are there any questions about how to use either this tool or the exercise that I'm asking you to do right now? I kind of have a question. Yes, go ahead. Are we answering this as EYSO what it means to us, or as it means to our kids? Why we signed up our kids? It's specifically what of your values are met, your values are met specifically. Our values, okay. So that could be your kids, it could be your kids, but um, it's really your values, what values are met for you. Um, okay. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, I'm going to set you into breakout rooms. I'm gonna do automatically and I wanna do three rooms, create rooms. That works. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up all the rooms, and if you have questions, let me know. Anyway, you'll get a two minute warning when it is to switch, and then another two minute warning, and then you. I'm sorry, two minutes, two minutes, and then you'll get a sixty second warning when we're gonna come back. Here we go. Yeah. So go ahead and accept that.
Oh, I think Eric might be joining. Hi. Hello. Are Hello. we able to still see the? Because right now I don't see the. Oh, you can't see the. Uh, okay. Let me see if. Our choices. Oh, is it because I? Hold on. Maybe because I navigated away. Okay, can you see it now? Let's see. I can see you now. You can see me now, but you can't see the thing. Not yet. No, I see a picture of a phone. You see a picture of a phone. Yeah, like a phone. Let me see if. Uh... Is, is it my phone? No, it's just like a phone icon. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay, I didn't think about that beforehand. Okay. Okay, we'll do it from memory. Sorry, hold on a second. And my partner is driving anyway, so she won't be able to see even if you put it up. So we'll, okay. just, we'll just chat about our... Yeah. Um, go ahead and chat about the values okay. of the met and, and, and I'll just listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first since I saw so I, since I saw the list mostly? So you mean I chat first? I start first? <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna step out. Could just could message okay. me back. Sounds good. Okay. Hi, Talasi.
Hi everyone. I'm sorry. I uh, I forgot that you can't see the screen when <laughs> when you go. So I should have what I should have done. I regret that I did not ask you to look at this first, figure out the values, and then put you into breakout rooms, which is what I could have done. Okay. Hi. Right, welcome back. <clears throat> So um, Cindy alerted me that um, <laughs> always the bearer of bad news. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks, um, thanks, Cindy. Uh, that, uh, you guys didn't have the will, so I, 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 everybody, so I apologize for that. I'm still going to try to do the discussion, um, and may, maybe now that you have the wheel in front of you, this will help. Um, so maybe I'll just ask. I'll just ask someone to share either if you were able to uh, to discuss it. Um, what values are met by your volunteering or having your kids enrolled in AYSO? Go ahead and either raise your hand or you still don't see the wheel. You don't see the wheel, really? Does anybody see the wheel? No. I don't see the wheel. You don't see the wheel? Oh, man. Give us the wheel, man. Give us the wheel. Oh, man. OK, hold on. Let's try this again. No, exit full screen. Gallery view. What did I do? Probably you need to share it again. Or need it? To share it again. Okay. Looks like it stopped sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here it comes. Okay. Finally, we get back to the wheel. Okay. Ah, here we go. One more time. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask two or three people. Just I, and I apologize if you're frustrated right now. I believe you. No, we're learning together. Right. If, if you're frustrated right now, it's an opportunity to exercise self-empathy. You're, you're doing it on purpose, right? You're yes, testing. I'm purposing, I'm, I'm, I'm purposing it. Um, so let's do this. Let me ask you, what, what of your values are met? What are, you, what are your values are met by you volunteering or having your kids enrolled by, by an AOS? So go ahead and take a look at the list. Is there anybody who'd like to, to go ahead? Oh, come on. I think I can I can go ahead and just sure. talk out a little bit. So uh, I think one of the important things which which I just mentioned during the breakout session was for me was uh, community aspect of it, where obviously we got to meet a lot of people, get their perspectives about the game, about developing children, about developing uh, various skills in children. So we got to learn a lot of things from them while doing practices, while playing tournaments while organizing things within the team. So all those things, we got to learn a lot. And the other part of it was obviously the learning aspect of it. So I got to learn a lot of things about interacting with people while refereeing uh, during this season. And obviously how there will be conflicts, there will be questions asked. So how do I really react to the, those things? So yeah, so those are the two important things which I got to learn and obviously how other children react to various situations when the when the game is going on how and how to basically handle young kids because obviously they will be upset and so all these skills kind of came through uh, I mean the learning came through as we progressed during the season and in, in different seasons so yeah so, so yeah. So I heard, in addition to the community, I heard learning for you. Yeah, you, yeah. Um, maybe empowering the kids a little bit with new skills. Yeah, yeah, definitely empowerment as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, some play and some... some. I mean, yeah, play, play is definitely there. Leisure is there. And then uh, another thing which I would say is the inclusion part of it. I think that also I resonate a little bit with inclusion because... You get all kinds of skill, all level of skills in the children. So how do we make sure that while practicing, when the coach is like coaching the team, how how he tries to balance the team and how he tries to include everyone during the game, after the game, and so so that's another thing which I think I I learned how to involve children of different skill levels. That kind of goes in inclusion. So. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Subod. I appreciate that. Maybe I was going to ask for one more person for uh, for just just to share. I'll, I'll share some. Yeah. Um, 
one of the big reasons I pick AYSO is because um, I notice my child is a lot more willing to take risks if he is safe. And that's where the positive coaching comes in. Mm -hmm. And so I see him doing a lot better because it's, there's a lot of focus on positive coaching. And so it, to me, it feels like a safe place for, for risk taking and really putting it out there and learning more. So learning safety, some trust in the system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and then just he, then again, he's empowered to, to, to be yep. create. I think maybe some creativity too in there maybe, huh? Definitely. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. So, <clears throat> so what I'd like you to do is if I had you on video, I'd have you nod, but uh, you know, think about some of the things that they were said, look at this wheel, you know, some, I suspect that for, for many of us, these, what, what um, Sabode and Cindy shared is, is uh is common it resonates and it's a way that we can connect to each other um and the idea with this exercise is just to get us to talk to each other and, and connect a little bit on these and to talk about values uh versus strategies so a value in this case there's another word called needs i'm going to try to use the word values uh, values are the things that um that tie us together because they're universal and when we're, our values are met we have in general we have positive emotions but let me get to the central 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 foundational thing for nvc um that is that every action is an attempt to meet a value or a need that is everything we say or do is an attempt to meet a value or a need in that moment so for me presenting at this time is uh this action the preparation is for me, it's learning, it's contribution, and community, among other things. <clears throat> Everything we say or do uh, is a value. I go to work because I need financial independence and stability. Um, if I'm, so everything we say or do, every action is an attempt to meet a need. This is the central tenant that uh, is gonna, we're gonna build the framework around. And when we clarify what those undervaluing needs or values are, we create, we create opportunities for peaceful resolution. Um, meaning that if we understand what it is that we are looking for, or if I understand what it is that I'm looking for, I'm going to be more able to look for creative ways to come to a solution or an action which is going to move things closer to satisfying my needs or my values, getting to my values. <clears throat> so uh, what I want to do is I want to start with an example that has happened to me more than once. Um, I've been coaching 5U and 6U soccer now for about four years, eight seasons. I would guess I spent a thousand hours with four-year-olds and five-year-olds. And uh, one of the things that happens quite often at these youngest ages is there'll be a boy or a girl, although it's usually a boy. He's sitting on the side of the field crying and saying something like, I want mommy. Uh, a man will walk over uh, and he'll just pick up that kid by his wrists and the boy's feet will be dangling and he's not standing. And the man says, just stand up and go play. Now, these are the observations I make, I think without judgment. Um, but here's the observation. So what happens then when I do this, when I see this, what happens inside of me in terms of feelings? So the next step in this is, is what am I feeling when I see this? And uh, these are in general are the things that I will feel. I'll feel frustration, I'll feel anger, and I'll feel fear. And the question is, that may feel other feelings as well. And I want you, uh, you know, it, I'm giving my example. You can also think about how you might feel if you saw this whether you're another parent watching this or something else. Maybe you feel sadness, maybe you feel confusion, other things. Um, so what are those values behind those feelings? What are the things behind the fear and the anger and the, um, let's see the word I used, frustration? So for me, the first thing is, is safety. I'm worried about the safety and well-being of that kid. 
I, I'm, I'm concerned his arms are going to get hurt. It's going to get stretched out. Um, I am I'm angry because honestly, I'm questioning my competence as a coach. What is it that I'm doing well or not well? And what am I not doing that's making that making that this kid, there's story behind this as well. But there's a there's a component of it which is, what am I doing or not doing as a coach that um, isn't allowing this kid to fully participate because I want him to participate. And uh, and uh, am I I'm angry? I'm angry. I might be angry because I'm thinking that that parent is going to hurt that kid, and they don't have the they don't understand what's going on or, or I don't understand it. There'll be some confusion as well. And uh, the other thing is, is that I want kids and parents to have the freedom autonomy to, to participate the way they want. So the point is, is that if these values aren't met of safety and freedom and learning, um, I'm going to have negative emotions behind that. So, here are some of the underlying negative feelings that I just talked about. These are my values. Um, safety, competence, I want peace in general. It doesn't that I want, I want to include everyone. I want to support parents. I want to support kids. I want to support kids in their growth. I want kids to have choice and I want kids to be empowered and I want parents to be empowered. These are all my values. So now this is where I'm asking for your participation. I'd like to ask you, what do you think that parents the man's underlying values are as well so i'm going to ask you guys to make some needs guesses or values guesses based on that this wheel so i'm going to give you a, so i'm going to ask you for input here if you need to unmute yourself on the phone it's a star six if you're calling in from a phone or i could um Otherwise, go ahead and unmute yourself or raise your hand. I think probably right now you could just unmute yourself and, and just go ahead and start talking. So what are the values that that parent are trying to meet by picking him up by the kid up by his arms? Is it regeneration like the parent wants? the kid to play absolutely sure the kid wants he wants the kid to play competence maybe competence in what way he's trying to help encourage is the best word i can think of the child to be Participate so they will be competent. Competent, sure. Competent, yep, yep. Uh, maybe learning. Uh, learning. The parent maybe think is the, the kid sitting on the side is missing on some of the instruction or some of the skills that the coach could be teaching. Yes, absolutely. Learning, absolutely. Um, maybe I could ask the group. Is there another way you could look at competence in terms of the way the parent is thinking? You guys maybe are completely enlightened so you don't think this way. <laughs> so, so one of the ways I think of competence when it comes to parent is competent, competence as a parent. So if my kid doesn't participate, I'm not being a good parent kind of a thing. It's reflecting poorly on the parent. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Any anything else? Any other values that uh, may or may any other values? So we had learning, we had competence, we had play. Okay. Maybe even inclus inclusiveness. Uh, because because the kid is alone and the rest of the kids are bonding. Absolutely. Inclusion to be part of the group, yeah? So so these are all great guesses and, I, and, I, and, and absolutely. So here's what I, I put and we could certainly add everything that I missed there. So I put competence, uh, uh, learning, I put as, as growth. Uh, also, I think empowerment. Um, 
I think that most parents value compassion. Certainly they, they offer support. Um, all these are the parents' values. Now, if you, now look, if you look at the two lists, you'll notice that there's some, you'll notice that we have exact, we, we have a lot of crossover in terms of values. And here's the idea. We both have, so we have common values. We just simply have different approaches. In this case, the parents approach, the action that they, the action that they took, the strategy they took to meet that value was to pick up their kids by their wrists. Um, it's not, a, my values aren't being met. So I'm, so I get angry and I'm worried about safety. So I would take a different approach. So what happens then is, is that emotions actually result, my emotions result at least, <laughs> but in general emotions result from if we think our values or needs are met. And this is where, this is sort of an important point. It's if we think our values and needs are met and people have different approaches and we're only talking about the values and needs themselves. We're not talking yet about strategies. A strategy would be for me to go and talk to the kid. A strategy for him is to pick up his kid by the wrists. We're only talking about the values underlying number one. Number two, we're talking about the emotions that result if we think our values or needs are met. Now, if our, we have positive emotions, we've talked about this a little bit already. And this is the first example. So when do positive emotions occur? That's a question for you guys. When do positive emotions occur? When you have alignment. When we have alignment, that's right. When we have alignment with our values, whatever's happening with our values is, is in alignment with, um, with whatever's, they're in alignment. That's exactly right. So, so positive emotions happen when values or needs are met. So when we see safe, when we have safety, when we have play, when we have growth, we have positive emotions. Um, so negative ha emotions happen when what what happens? No. Uh, when, our needs, when our needs and emotion values are not met. That's exactly right. You got it. So here are the two foundations of, of NBC that are important to start with. Every action is an attempt to meet needs or feelings. Every single thing we do, every moment, every instance of every day is an attempt to meet needs or values. And our emotions uh, result from if we think our needs or values are met. Um, and Marshall actually used to say that thinking is a bad thing. You shouldn't think. I'm not going to tell you that. But <laughs> the idea is to adjust the way we view things through nonviolence uh, to help us uh, respond rather than react. So I'm going to go through the three-step process now for, for working through that. So again, the two foundations of NVC are every action, everything we say or do is an attempt to meet needs or values. And our emotions result from if we think our needs or values are met. So the step first process is the step, the first step in the NVC process is actually self-empathy. Um, we want to work our way up to a way to respond to what we want rather than react to what we don't want. And I still find the funny thing is, is that for, for these, all of these activities that I do around nonviolent communication or mindfulness, it's usually people already on this path. They're, they're working on ways to respond rather than react. The idea is to give you a, a pragmatic sort of mechanical way of doing this and then to internalize it. So what you, the first exercise is to, um, here is to think of a situation with negative emotions, something where you were angry, sad, or frustrated. frustrated. Uh, and I do want to give this one little bit of guidance. On a scale of one to five, you want to pick something that's about a two or a three. You don't want to pick a five, something that drives you absolutely out of your mind. This is a learning situation. So you want to pick something that's a two or a three. It has to have enough juice in it so that, um, <laughs> It has enough juice in it so that you can you can evoke the emotion. So you want to take that thing, that situation, and summarize it into a simple sentence. Um, for me, it might be my wife never takes out the garbage, or for for you know you can imagine a work situation or even a soccer situation where you can say, 
wow, that parent is always late. I can't believe that. And then I'm trying to evoke an emotion. The idea here is to evoke an emotion. So close your eyes, repeat that sentence, let it run through your head, and then just notice the sensations in your body and where those sensations are. And I'm going to give you about a minute to think about this. I'm going to time this. And I'm going to ask you for, I'm going to invite people to give feedback. So I'm going to give you, actually I'm going to give you a full 90 seconds on this one. Go. I'm sorry, I'm going to give just a couple of tips. For me, example, it might be, actually, no, I'm not going to give examples. I'm going to give you a minute. <laughs> I'm going to give you a minute. Notice the sensations in your body, your breathing, um, all the parts of your body. Okay, so now I'm going to ask for volunteers. Now that you've been reading this horrible sentence in your mind for the last minute, <laughs> okay. someone, if someone would be willing to share some of the sensations that they, they had in their body, either the location, you don't, location, the sensation, anything. So I have one. So it's like shallower breathing, mm -hmm. like more, um, I want to say less deep breathing, more like quick breathing. More rapid breathing, yep. Yeah. And I can feel that I'm getting flushed, like I'm getting frustrated, mm -hmm. like blood in my face, kind of hot. You're getting hot in your face. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Krista. Thank you for sharing that. One more person, maybe. Pratika. I had almost, yeah, I had almost the same sensation as well as I was feeling something in my stomach also, mm. and I think it was more of helplessness. Helplessness. Helplessness, and you felt that that sort of a tightness in your stomach, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else would like to share, or thank you, Pratik. Okay, so here's some sort of common things that people will, will feel. And I think this is, you know, I think Pratik and Krista had said this, rapid breathing, heart rate can speed up, um, posture can close, your stomach will tighten, your jaw will tighten. Negative feelings, the helplessness, they just increase. Um, and this is part of the, the process of, of just, to, just to notice if you think about something, if you think about something, then you're, you can, you know, you have physical changes in your body. So now what we're going to do is just take a moment to find the value or need behind that negative emotion. Um, what is the need? What is the value that wasn't met? And I might, I don't know. I'd really like to ask, you don't have to tell us the situation, but if you want to, you can. And what I'm going to ask is if you can, if I'm going to ask for someone to say, you know, what was the value or need that behind the negative emotion that isn't met in a, in a short one or two sentence thing. And I'm happy to have either Pratik or Krista continue or to have someone new come in. I'll let I think the, my, um, my thing is contribution because I think um, the situation is that my son never cleans his room. So it's more out towards contribution towards keeping the room clean and keeping the house clean, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. Con contributing to the family cleanliness and the, and the, the harmony or, or uh, the harmony and beauty of the space, maybe, huh? 
Does that sound about right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, with that contribution. Would anyone else like to, uh, thank you for that, was that Pratik? Thank you. Um, would anyone else like to invite one more person maybe? I know this is a lot to ask, but mine is appreciation as a parent. I have a teenager, so mm. I'm sure that's never happened to you. No, no, my teenagers are so appreciative. They, <laughs> they clean their room, they put their dishes in the dishwasher, <laughs> they go to bed at 8.30 wow. every night. Yeah, none Amazing. of those things are true. <laughs> Appreciation, right. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Pratik, thank you, Cindy. So now what I wanna do is ask you to translate this. So everybody, so I'll go back to the, the wheel in just a moment. Um, what I want you to do is take the sentence you had before and translate it into a new sentence. So Cindy, in your case, it might be, I love it when I, um, when I get appreciation or I feel appreciation, or if I, I love it when I'm appreciated, or I, let's, let me think for a minute, sorry, give me a second. Yeah, I, I love it when I'm appreciated. Pratik, I'm, I love it when uh, we have, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because I, I love it when we have shared a shared reality of contribution that might be what i would say Pratik, for you so what i'm going to do is ask you each of you to just take the sentence that you had go back to the value that we had and say the words i love it when and use the value that you want met that you really really want met um does everybody understand this does anybody have any questions Okay, so I'm gonna, they're gonna do a little bit longer meditation this time. It's gonna be a two minute. And I want you to simply say this phrase in your, to yourself over and over for the next two minutes. I'm gonna start the timer now. Just focus on that phrase and that phrase only. Do your best. Oh, and it's okay to use more than one value if that helps. I love it when, two minutes. Okay, come on back. So now what I'm gonna ask is um, to notice the sensations in your body as, you're, as you've repeated the sentence in your mind. Notice where you are now. I, sh I should have given you this direction earlier. Okay, if we talk about what, it, what, what happens, what's happened to your breathing during that time. So I'm gonna ask for volunteers, what are the sensations that changed as you went through that meditation. And again, I, I regret I did not ask you to do that during it, but uh, we wanted to take a moment and just notice, Go, ahead. please go ahead. Um, what are the sensations that, that you had in your body? I think the breathing changed to deep breathing 
and the body kind of relaxed. Okay. Thank you, Pratik. Yeah, it was it was more of a relaxed feeling a little bit. The more and more I was repeating this particular positive sentence, it was more. I think yeah, it the body was more relaxed. It was feeling much more calm. I would say more calmness was there. Thank you, Subodh. And I saw Krista nodding as well when uh, Pratik was going. Thank you. Um, so. Absolutely. So the things that we see, these are common, is just that we see deeper breathing, the heart rate slows down, the chest opens up, relaxes. And it's generally a sense of hope will expand uh, as we feel that. So this ties back to that first, remember those foundational statements? This is a really self, simple self-empathy process that helps us when we're triggered um, so that um, if you think that your need has been met, you're able to connect with the, the, the value or the need. And you can really understand what's going on in your body and you can calm your nervous system down. And this is really the first step in the process of communication. Is, is a, is, it is a self-connection process. To understand that whatever emotion that you're feeling, and generally it's a negative emotion, and understand the underlying value or need which is not being met, and then to take a moment uh, to do this practice, and usually it only takes a minute, and to ref once you've identified the value, to take a moment and in and repeat that phrase to to calm yourself down, to move to a place where you can respond rather than react. So the first step in nonviolent communication towards effective communication is to really connect to yourself. It's a self-connection step. So self-empathy. So does anybody have any questions or concerns about, any questions about self-empathy in this process? Uh, uh, Eric, I have a question about like practicing this in terms of uh, it's yeah as you mentioned that instead of reacting try to respond so are there any way uh, i mean i know it's it may be a dumb question but it's like i, I think it, this is something which will not come in one day or two days right you need to kind of remind yourself every time you react that it, it has to be a self feedback loop kind of thing or are there any other ways in which we can practice this perfect thank you for that question so yes uh, i got there's sort of three questions the first is is it i think i think that what i heard was is that you said that this is something you need to practice it doesn't come instantly and there are and i think you were asking for suggestions to practice is that what i heard that's right yeah that's okay. right so so the answer is is this, it is a lifelong practice. And of all the NVC people I've talked to, it is a lifelong thing. Um, and, and the process of self empathy has to do first with observing that something is happening that night. So it really is exactly what we've gone through, which is to observe that there's a negative emotion or a body sensation um, that's happening and then look for the underlying value that's not being met. And that's really what it is. It's something is happening. Oh, something is happening. Let, give me, a, I'm gonna go into myself for a moment and give myself the space and time to, to do the self-empathy exercise. It's noticing that you're having a feeling and it's noticing a physical sensation. And that's really the first step. Uh, can I just comment on that, Eric? Because yeah. I had a real world experience where um, I had been working with similar concepts to this lesson, but the focus was like on um, being able to at least identify something is happening now. Yes. But I was not able to get to the step where I have something that I love that I can't or a feeling that I have that's not being met. I couldn't get there because mm -hmm. all I could identify at least was like in this moment, I'm having all of this emotion right now mm -hmm. or a sensation that I have an emotion. Mm -hmm. My face is turning red. I'm breathing 
heavy. This person has triggered me. Mm -hmm. And it was a work scenario. And the most powerful thing that I, that I learned from the experience was being able to say in that moment, can you see that my face is turning red and that I'm having difficulty responding to what you've just said? Mm. Because I'm feeling emotional right now and I'm going to need 10 minutes or 10 seconds or whatever I said, I don't even remember. Yes. So uh, clear my mind before I'm going to be able to respond what just happened. <laughs> I, I, I love this so much. I love this so much because Krista, this is... Um, uh, you know, that you had the presence of mind to say, I need the space and time to process this so that I can, you know, respond in a way. So it, it's beautiful in how, in its authenticity and its honesty. Um, and it's definitely part of the process. Um, what you, do, do you, so this really resonates with me, Krista. Do you, do you, do you see how it does resonate with me? Does that, how does that land with you, what I said? Yeah, I just feel like it was so much more than I would have been capable at the moment of noticing which value did I pick, which one's the one, the problem. It wasn't even that level. <laughs> it's like, I'm having a visceral response in this moment, and I just need to tell you I'm having it because it's going to take me a few minutes to get my thoughts together before I can continue, or else it's going to be highly unproductive. <laughs> yes, and I love this. I love it. I love it so much. It's, I think, and it's, I think for some people, it's really hard in a work environment. You really want to be able to say what you did, which is, let's table this. I'm going to take a minute. Um, and I think that that's, from my perspective, this is the self-empathy process. It is the NVC process. You've made the observation. You're having these feelings. Um, and then you made a request. And that, I haven't gone through this because it was, it's at the end. But you made a request, which is actionable, which is, let's take a moment so I can go and and work this out. So I love that. Thank you so much. And I'll tell you, Krista, um, I've been doing this really intensively for four months. I just figured out what you said about two weeks ago. So I love that you, um, you brought this up. Subod, I think it was Subod that asked that question. Um, did, yeah. I, so I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Krista, do you feel this is pretty complete that you expressed and you felt heard and? Yeah. Okay. Subod, what did you? How did you feel about this discussion? Is did you feel your, your question was answered? Yes, I I think I think I kind of uh, uh, Krista's example did give me some ideas about not to react basically. So take a moment, take a moment before you really go ahead and say or do anything. Yes, is, is that is that, am, am I saying it correct, Krista? Well, in my case, that's what I did. And yeah, so, I think it caught the other person by surprise, honestly. Um, so I think they were like, oh, yeah, sure. I don't think they were expecting that response. Right. So basically two, basically two learnings. Take a moment and observe before you go ahead and do anything further. Absolutely. That's the very practical way. And in fact, if you look at, if you remember, we go back to our wheel of values or needs. Um, space is one of those things. So I think of time and space as the same thing. So Krista, actually what you really did need or value at that moment was space. So you could go and do the other things you need to do so you could be productive. So in my mind, it was perfect MVC. And now Subod, you have the, you know, a strategy, a strategy based on a need, a clear request that you can make. That's and right. In my opinion, this is really difficult in, business and in silicon valley sometimes there's some expectation that we're automatons um and there's some expectation that you know it has to be like this and um slowing things down can really really help with communication and specifically self-connection um other questions or comments Subo, do you feel complete? Yeah, yeah, as of now. Thank you. Obviously. Yeah. So here's the second process. And this is exactly, actually, I, again, I love the example that Krista brought. Um, the second step is empathy. And this is basically 
um, effective, powerful, compassionate listening. And it's the idea to, is to, is to understand the world from another person's perspective based on feelings and values. And this is the second step after you've connected with self. So Krista took the space to go and connect with herself first. She could come back and she could exercise step two, which is the empathy part. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So um, there's two forms of empathy exercise. Um, I'd really like to do this exercise. So we've already done a pretty big introduction to needs and feelings, but I'd like to go in and if you're willing, I invite you now, I'm going to put you into pairs and each talk for about, I'm going to say two minutes. Let me just make sure I can do this properly. We're not going to focus on the needs wheel or the value, the, the values wheel right now. Um, I just want you to talk to each other about something that negative that happened, or something that creates this negative emotion. It's up to you to choose the level that you want. This is an invitation. It is not a, it's a request. If you don't want to do this, let me know. And I won't, I won't put you into a breakout room. And uh, let's see. I'm going to take, let's see. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to put you back into your other rooms. Does anybody have any, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, actually, no, I'm going to recreate the room. Sorry. I'm going to just recreate them, automatically recreate rooms. See if that works. And recreated you into exactly the same rooms. Okay. Hold on. Okay. You're going to be in your same rooms. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so back here's the, exercise. what's that? Back to your rooms. Back to your rooms. That's right. Uh, we'll do six minutes, uh, one minute, one minute, one, one to two minutes per person. Talk about something and um, we're going to come back and just, uh, and, and I'll give you two minute warning, a four minute warning, and then we'll come back. Okay. And Cindy, you and your partner, I'm not sure what your partner's name is. What's your partner's name, Cindy? I don't think I cut her name. Okay. Remind um, me her name. She's muted. Oh, she's needed. Okay. If, if, if you net up without someone, just let me know. Okay, here we go. I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> we'll come back in six minutes. Here we, okay. Anybody have any questions well, about this exercise? Okay. Um, just talk, uh, and I'll, uh, we'll be back in six minutes. Here we go.
William, can you hear me? Okay. Cindy and her buddy are in that room. They love each other so much. Here uh, we are. There we go. Cindy, we, we, you and your buddy, we were waiting for you to come back, which is just fine. I know. Oh, uh, we were having too much fun. I, I bet you were. That's the way it is. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. Um, this is the first, this is the first way we do it. And Normally I would ask you how you feel after this, but I'm gonna go straight into how we're gonna, we're gonna do it a different way now. Um, so, so I'm gonna talk about what empathy is as a presence. Um, well, actually, let me ask you guys, did you guys, no, no. Sorry, I'm thinking about how to. There are ways to um, provide empathy and discussions and i'd like to to give you or or give you the lesson of of the way that tends to be more healing um, and empathy really is a presence number one more than anything it it doesn't necessarily have to have any words said uh, it's free of judgment analysis interpretation or opinion um, or trying to fix a problem or solve a problem and the real focus is on on, on that other person's perspective um, so if you've ever been talking with a person and they try to fix the problem, I'm sure everybody has experienced this. 
um, that generally cannot is not that um, connecting and isn't really empathy. It, it tends not to be as healing or as present. So the method for empathy here is the reason I wanted you to have the, that discussion first is I wanted to teach you the 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 empathy method, which is here. And this is the mechanical way to do it. Over time, you'll learn to do this a different way. Um, so what you do is you try to make empathy guesses. And the guesses relate to the feeling and the value. So are you feeling sad because you'd really like support in keeping the house clean? Are you um, frustrated because you'd really like clarity on the requirements for this next, next project or what's expected of, of me? So um, I think that, uh, so I'm gonna, so I would, I'm gonna give a few, a few examples here. So in Krista's case, if I was trying to give her empathy, I would say, you're really, you're really frustrated right now and you'd need some space to, to, uh, to gather your thoughts, something like that. Um, and, and I gave Pratik's example. Um, so that's kind of it. So what I'd really like to do is go back into your groups again and, and exercise this specific technique and compare it to what you did just now. So in the second round, you're going to recap what you said in one sentence. And then you're going to have another one of the other one or two people give an empathy guess, just as I suggested. Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling frustrated? What it is? Now I haven't given you a list of feelings. Um, what I am going to do is I am going to come back to the uh, the values wheel, and show you this. If hopefully you can remember some of what was there. And 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 just look at this. Take a moment to look at this. If you can remember what you talked about. So you can make your empathy guesses for the other person, for the other person, okay? So I'm gonna give you a minute, a few seconds here, take a look, look through that. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back into our groups. And again, the exercise is this, restate your, your negative thing in one sentence. And then the other two will do empathy guesses and we'll do it for two minutes each for a total of six minutes. Can you t go over again what the empathy guess is? We're guessing. You're guessing the feeling and the need. Guessing, so not guess. Guessing, guessing. Like guess, like estimating. Okay. So I might, so for in your example, I might say, hey, um, Cindy, are you frustrated because you're, are you feeling frustrated because you really would like some appreciation from your teenage child? Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, and in this way, we shift the energy to the other person's perspective. Okay. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Okay. Here we go. Breakout rooms one more time. Go into the room. Six minutes, I'll give you two minute warnings. Are we here? I'm with you. <laughs> you still need to join, <laughs> click join, click join, unless, unless you don't like your partner. There we go. <laughs> Pratik, you gotta click join if you're gonna join. We lost, might have lost Pratik. That's okay if we did.
I think we got everybody back. Okay, great. So, um, so the, now the question is: Is uh, did you feel any difference when we used the empathy guess with the feelings and the need and the the values, the needs? So uh, if I could ask if anybody would like to share. Well, I think I felt like, uh, even though I don't know the people in my connection room very well, like in the breakout room, I mean, like we were able to recognize that we had a common or a bit of a common uh, scenario going on in our family dynamics. And it was helpful because we were able to connect on like a need that we were struggling with in our families. So you felt connected to each other because of the common, the common situation and the common values, maybe more common values, less the situation, but like mm -hmm. more the, the common desire. Did, did you, did you feel? Okay. Okay. A anybody else? I think as it comes with empathy, when somebody's trying to show empathy towards you, it's like you are being heard. You feel you feel supported. I would say. I mean, yeah. As as Krista mentioned, right? I mean, it's the the common link because both of you are going through those negative emotions. When somebody's trying to talk about it, you feel better i mean there is some amount of positivity going in there so you felt like you were heard yeah and you felt like you had a shared reality around this family situation yeah okay okay anyone else If I could just add, I don't think there's very many places where there's um, a safe environment that is trustworthy where you can go and speak honestly and with transparency about, I need this or I feel that here in the Valley. So yes, um, what was interesting about that exercise was that within you know an hour's time, we're talking about very kind of fundamental human condition <laughs> in a context of a scenario here or there. You know, I want to be recognized for the competence I have and I feel disappointed when, you know, somebody doesn't recognize what my skills are or I feel sad when I see, you know, what I perceive as potential being squandered here or there. All yeah. those things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And if I can, ref you open for a reflection? Of course. I think um, what I heard from you is just that it's rare to have a safe container in which to express authentically and honestly, honestly, and, and really quite honest, and I think to be vulnerable in a way. Um, and and in, in our business environment, it's just hard to do it. In fact, it's almost not not valued or it's not expected. Is that is that part of what I heard there? Well, in a business environment, I think it's not expected, nor is it easily recognized how it's relevant. Mm -hmm. I think in the context of community, if we're talking about something like AYSO or something where you're naturally exposing more of or other dimensions of who you are, mm -hmm. it's possibly more accepted that there are things that people don't know but you're equally unprepared to deal with it if you're on the perceiving end. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's hard to know what, what to say or how to take it forward in a 
positive way. So sometimes that just leads to say nothing, do nothing, because at least that won't offend. That's interesting. Um, what I think I'm going to do, Krista, I, I, I heard what you said, but I want to actually I'm regretting some things I said. So I really want to go back to what you first said with the first learning. That's okay. Um, you thought it was surprising. You felt surprised that within an hour you were able to touch on some issues with some safety. Is that fair statement? Is that a fair statement? Yep. Okay. Um, so it may be, so uh, this is, I, I really appreciate that you shared that, Krista, because I think this for me is the magic of empathy and this particular process is is that is to create a container of trust whether it is this kind of a a seminar or two people or a practice group wouldn't it be extraordinary if we could we could do this and develop this every day every minute and every day with other people and actually with ourselves, which is the process, self-empathy and then empathy. So uh, I appreciate that you uh, said that. Um, I'm noticing the time and I've gone way over as I expected I would. Um, I'd really like to ask if anybody has any objections to going another full 30 minutes. Um, if you would like to leave, of course you may, but I still have a bit more material I'd like to go through if you're interested. Do we, are there any objections? I'm good. Thank you, Cindy. I may have to leave Eric in five minutes. Okay. Thank you, Sabod. I appreciate that. I can stay. Thank you, Krista. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. What is your name who's on the phone? This is Yahweh. I'm sorry, one more time. This is Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, hi, Yahweh. Thanks. Hi. For yeah. First time. Yeah. Thank you very much for this event. Thank you. Um, so I think what you saw was there, there are differences. So those are the first two steps. The first step is empathy. The second, the first step is self empathy. The second step is empathy. The third step is honesty. Marshall Rosenberg actually states it like this, know what you want before you open your mouth, which I thought was always the funnest, funniest way to say that. So remember the first step is, is self-empathy. Self-empathy is the first step. Know what you want before you open your mouth. Second step is empathy. And that creates, so the first step is to connect yourself. The second step is to connect to the other person by trying to understand their life experience, by ref using reflections of feelings and needs. Then at that point, you can then express yourself with honesty. You can speak your truth. So the third step, sorry, here's the first two steps again, self-empathy, then empathy, and then honesty. And in this case, because you've practiced self-empathy, you've created the connection through empathy and you can now express yourself with honesty and you can state what you want in a way that you can state what's important to you in a manner that's more likely to produce willingness to communicate and cooperation with other people. So the last step is honesty. Um, and if you can connect with honesty, that's the step at which you can identify your feelings and needs, regardless of what the other person is doing, if they're doing NVC or not, and it's easier to do it with people who do NVC, but <laughs> you can then express honestly because you've made that connection. You know in the first step what you need or what you value, you know how you feel, and you can state how you, what you feel and what you need in a way that is honest and clear. And that gets us to the last four things that you need to know about this whole process. Um, so the, again, the three, the, the two fond foundational pieces are everything someone says or does is an attempt to meet a value. Everything we do, 
And all of our emotions result from whether we think our values have been met. And the three tools are self-empathy. I love it when I connect with others in my case, or I love it when I receive reappreciation. Compassionate listening, are you feeling sad because you really need support? And then honesty is communicating your feelings and needs. Okay. Does anybody have any questions up to this point? And then I'll go through the remaining mechanics of this as part of this um, thing. So here's the bonus section, uh, OFNR. Um, and this is the abbreviation. There are four things, oh, sorry, here we go. Here are the four pieces. They are observations, feelings, needs, sorry, observations, feelings, needs, values, and requests. And this is the sequence in which we actually have already done this. Observation is an observation versus a judgment. So Subod, you asked, how do we do this? And what's the uh, thing we do? So the first step for me is observing what's happening. Uh, just as Krista did in her situation where she was feeling, I wanna say overwhelmed with emotion. She made that observation. She didn't judge it as good or bad. She just said, I'm feeling this way, I need a minute. But the idea is to make an observation through a video camera. So one more, as if you were looking at something in video game without judgment. So for example, if you remember the first example where I said, I saw the father go pick up the kid by his arms, I could have said, I could have had multiple judgments rather than an observation. So the observation was the kid's crying. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's saying, I want my mommy. A man walks over, picks him up by his arms and the kid's legs are dangling and the man says, go out and play. Now those are all things you could kind of see through a video camera or hear. I didn't say things like that kid is bad at soccer. Uh, that kid is sick. That father is a, is a mean father. Those are, those would be judgments. So the idea in the O step is to make an observation and it start in the self empathy step. It starts with an observation of what's going on with you. What is happening in your body and where is it happening? That's the first step. And then you observe that you're having these feelings, whatever those feelings are. And you do it without judgment. The second step is feelings versus evaluation. So what am I feeling? In this case, I use the feelings of frustration, anger, and fear. To me, these are what we would call negative emotions. Eventually, you'll learn that emotions are just emotions. This is what we call emo negative emotions. And to evaluate those, or I'm sorry, to have those feelings, to notice, to observe those feelings without evaluation. I'm gonna give you this example um, from my life, for example. I grew up in a middle class. My parents grew up during uh, post-war post -war China. They had very little, they worked very hard to do what they had and you know they're educated. And I could, for example, have these feelings of frustration because I've had it a lot easier and I could judge myself or evaluate that my feelings about what I've accomplished are wrong, that I should, shouldn't feel a certain way because I had more advantages than my parents or my situation isn't nearly, I didn't know if I have to overcome. But the, and the idea is to not evaluate the feelings as right or wrong, is to evaluate the feelings as feelings. If I feel guilt, or I feel shame, simply identify that I have those feelings without putting a value on whether or not I should feel those. We can, one of the things we like to say is you shouldn't, sh you shouldn't should all over yourself. So don't should all over yourself. <laughs> Once you've gone through these first two steps, observers and feelings, then you try to underline, find what the underlying value or need is versus a strategy, okay? Now, what's important about this is the reason I use the word values is because the word needs in our language is associated with strategies. I need um, sleep. Makes sense. Certainly you may need sleep, but sleep is a strategy to get rest. Another way to rest would be to just sit in a chair or to not go to work one day and watch 
Netflix all day, not that I've ever done that. Um, the idea is, is that a value is something that you really value at its core. And I, for example, do value rest as something that it's needed for my well-being. And, and to figure out what those needs are and not to evaluate the strategies. So I value safety, competence, peace, inclusion, support, choice, growth, and empowerment. And there's many ways to, to empower people and there's many ways to do growth. But the idea is to understand what the underlying values are first. And if you can work with first yourself and then eventually through self-empathy and then with others, you can identify strategies later that will help you meet those values. So if you go through these steps, observation, observe what's happening, see what you can see, touch, taste, hear, or smell. You can identify the feelings without evaluation, identify the value that's met or unmet, usually unmet, and not the strategy, okay? You can make money many ways through different strategies, but you would like, you really would value financial independence. You look for value, you look for values without strategies. Then you can start looking at strategies or requests. Okay, so the last step of this is requests. And the requests are different than demands. So in my self-empathy process is I look at that father lifting up that kid and I'm worried he's gonna get injured. I'm going through a self-empathy process which isn't going to be a demand first, of myself first. The request is from myself is to empathize. Now I've got in touch with the fact that these are my core needs and my core values. I can make the request of myself to empathize with the father first and empathize with the child before I'm taking over action. Um, the other request I might make of myself is empathy before education or connection before correction. Either one of these works. And I'm going to use, I think it was Subod's or Patik's example of the room. Okay. Think about, um, in the self-empathy step, we've already gone through the self-empathy step of I'm frustrated because I really value contribution in keeping the room, the house clean. Then I would, my request to myself would to empathize with my kid. What is it that they're looking for? Is it they're looking for autonomy? Is it they're looking for ease? Because sometimes we want things easy. We don't want to fill out our taxes every year. It's just not fun. It takes a lot of effort, but we do it. So we'd really like some ease. We'd like things to be a little bit easier sometimes with our kids, with our spouses, with our parents at work, wherever it is. Ease is actually a core value or core need. Um, the idea is, is that you can create requests or strategies once you've gone through this process of observations, feelings, values or needs, and and then you can do your request. And here's kind of the key to this, which is uh, of the needs part. Once you get to the core values and say you do shared core values of support or contribution or appreciation, it's then possible, and you've done the self-empathy step where you calm yourself down, and then you've done the empathy step with connection. You can then come up with strategies through requests, actionable requests. And the request could be simply, let's be creative about how we can help keep, we can, how you can keep your room clean or how you can go to bed early so you can get up on time so you get enough rest. You can then create strategies that meet everybody's needs. The idea here is, is that values actually are not conflicting. Values, if we talk about values, we have all these shared values. And if we talk about them in a way, we can come up with strategies that meets everybody's values. And you can think of this in terms of um, the examples. It's, um, I'm trying to think of an example right now. The, the only examples I can think of is, is, is the people who do this for a living, mediation, divorce mediation. The people that I know that do this professionally for a living um, and Marshall Rosenberg himself, 
once everybody could kind of agree or reflect that they each could understand each other's core values or needs, resolution could be made within 20 minutes. He said that. And um, the people that I've trained with now who do mediation, actually, they all pretty much agree with that. It, may, it takes about two hours for the typical divorce mediation. And usually they're able to resolve, in most cases, they're able to resolve everything within two hours because they come to common core values between the two parties. And then they can come up with creative strategies to meet everybody's values. Can I just echo that, Eric? Sure. So I think you know, but I don't think anyone else on this call may know. Like my husband, he's served twice in Afghanistan and both times he's working with the Afghans and the culture is very different from here. And the scenarios and the pressure under which those soldiers on both sides are trying to like work together, the Afghan militants and the the NATO forces participating in this. And honestly, he said that like the most valuable training that he had was while we were um, participating as parents in a parent co-op preschool. And essentially a lot of what we're talking about in this lesson are kind of similar concepts to what we were learning as parents in a parent co-op preschool. Wow. Which is how do I understand um, what I'm feeling how do I associate that with what I could anticipate someone else is feeling? And then like, what do I do to try to, you know, establish a relationship with the other so Wonderful. that we can move forward. But I guess what I was trying to say is I think, you know, really global universal kind of common human needs are what you put on that slide with the wheel. Mm -hmm. And I think it really applies. But the hardest part of all of that is that, you know, everybody has an ego. And, and everybody has a rank stacking that they're doing of their own values. And it might be a different stacking of the same values that someone else has, such that there's conflict. And it feels like an irreconcil irreconcilable conflict at some specific level within that hierarchy of what it is that I value most versus least. Um, but the important point and in all of this is if I can get to the point where I can see something through someone else's eyes, then I can move past a lot of my bias, um, especially if I'm in a role where I'm here to support. Yes. I think the challenge is getting yourself to the position where you believe that it's not an ego issue, I'm here to support. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for sharing that, Krista. Um, Part of my practice is to, to, to model what, I, what I'm trying to teach. So for example, when you were saying that, I, I felt this, this real resonance inside of me. I actually had some, a little bit of this quivering nervousness on the left side near my heart. And I just got really excited uh, to hear that. So I really appreciate that you said that, Krista. Um, and especially to hear that, um, that experience. Um, I think it was both you and Dan, or was it, is it just Dan? That had that well, I mean, I, I think he most recently articulated it, which is what I was sharing. But mm -hmm. I think as a parent at this co-op, we spent a lot of time on this kind of general area. Ah, thank you so much for sharing that. And 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 it's interesting because we do talk about these things in the NBC seminars that I go to. We talk about ego, and one of the ideas or ideas is is exactly is, is that. Uh, our needs or our values actually change from instant to instant. Uh, whether at this instant it is for me to contribute or to be heard or to learn. And in fact, one of the central premises is to try to, and I'm still working on this, the needs and values, um, it is the strategies which are conflicting. The needs and values actually, the, the concept is, is that these things actually cannot compete. They may be more alive in us or in a group at any one instant. However, we can agree that we want every, I hope we can agree that we want to be safe and we want to be respected. Um, but the strategies we go about that may be different. And um, 
I appreciate what you said. Um, there's more depth to that discussion that I think we have time for today. And I would love to talk with you more about it. Um, yep, no worries. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Um, what I'd like to do is um, actually close it out a little bit with a couple of things. Um, what we do is we do something where we do a needs met at the end of every NVC activity. Um, and we do it in one of two ways. Because of the way this group is structured, I want to do it as a, we either do it as needs popcorn, where people just yell out a need, specific need. So what I'm going to suggest is, is just, since we still have most of us here, um, I'd really like everybody to go if we can. Um, I haven't heard from Ashesh or Naresh, but um, if we'd like to just share one or two of the needs met on the needs wheel here, I, I would love to hear from you. Um, and I'll, I will start. Uh, one is, uh, so, and, and you can do multiple ones, but certainly for me, it's connection, community, and contribution. You can do one, two, or three. It's up to you how many you want to do. Um, but for me, um, and for me, very much learning. Uh, I really learned from this, from presenting it, and I learned from the things that you shared. So thank you all for that. Um, I have gratitude for that. Next person. I would say learning, 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 and learning. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Simone. Um, let's see. I'm going to ask a call on uh, Ashesh, if you're willing to. I'd like to invite you to share. If you're in a place where you can share. Yeah, I, I would say learning, uh, Eric. Learning. Okay. Thank you, Ashesh. Uh, I got Cindy next on my list. So learning, compassion, peace of mind. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. William, I'm not sure you're in a place you can talk. Are you in a place you can talk? It's okay. I'm going to give you a, a moment if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Okay. Saying no, I'm muting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, he, he, he told me earlier he was in a place where he couldn't unmute. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, how about Naresh? Could I invite you to, to share? Yeah, hi. Uh, so I think... Uh, a sense of community and cooperation is is what we need here because we are like we have a very busy life here we uh, we go drive aggressively in the morning try to wait through the traffic come back in the evening and frustrated why it took me so long and uh, need some peace of mind i guess okay and your needs met today were the the needs or the values that was met through this interaction Yes, sir. Yes, it did. Okay. Was there a specific need that was met? Specifically, the example that Krista shared, I mean, that was really helpful. Okay. Yeah, that, you know, take a moment to respond to people. Like, sometimes it's hard to control yourself, but, but you know, it's, it's really hard to control when somebody is, like, pushing your buttons. And uh, so I guess Sorry. it just take some time, I guess. Thank you, Naresh. Yeah. Krista? Um, let's see. I think I, I was happy with the um, consideration uh, I felt here and also um, gratitude for the listening in the small groups and probably peace of mind would be the other thing. I'm not alone. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Krista. Um, so normally I would close it now. I would say thank you so much for your time. And um, I would like to invite you to stay just for a few more minutes so we can discuss some follow-up options. So I invite you to stage for just another couple minutes. Um, I wanted to know if you were, in, if ever, anyone was interested in either an online or an in-person practice group that would be either weekly or two to three times a month. Um, and the practice group would involve, um, it would involve less, a lot less lecture. In fact, um, it would involve a lot more discussion. 
uh, I would recommend that uh, everybody buy the book um, or watch Marshall's video or both, but uh, it, that wouldn't be required. The practice group is designed to practice around the, the all the principles we talked about, ask questions, and I would facilitate by bringing a, my, a small lesson and then different practices. These typical practice groups are two hours. I like it weekly, but depending, nobody, you don't have to come weekly, it's an invitation. And the idea was um, to connect um, and, and to share NVC and to practice NVC. I personally have found it to be very healing. Um, I will, yeah, the name of the book is um, uh, Nonviolent Communication, the language of life. Um, I can, I, I actually have copies I can sell to you for $10. I got a bunch of them. And if, so if you're interested, just uh, email me and I will, and I'll, I'll leave one out on my porch and just PayPal me 10 bucks or give me 10 bucks when you see me. Um, I am thinking about doing it, uh, starting it over the summer and then continuing it through the fall and maybe forever. That's kind of the plan. I'm not sure how much participation we'll get in the summer. And actually, I'm not actually sure right now how much I'll be around the summer. I should be around most of the time. So um, I'm going to ask for you guys for some input. Would you, and you can either type it or you can, uh, you know, would, would you like, so first, my, you know, would you like in-person, online, or a combination? Subod says combination would be fine. Um, Krista says combo, but cannot commit to every week, and that's okay. Um, it's it's invited. Yep, yep. I'm glad you you always have great pictures from your summer travel, Krista. Naresh says combination is fine. I think my pro preference would be online. Your preference would be online. Yes, I understand you're a bit of a shut in. I am a little bit of an introvert. <laughs> you know, this is uncomfortable for me. Really. Seriously. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that you were <laughs> felt like it was safe enough. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. I heard. Okay. So I think that's almost everybody. Yeah. Great. Okay. So um, let me work with you all and see if we can find some times and uh, days of the week that might uh, that might work. And uh, and uh, I'm hoping we'll be able to invite some beginners as well. So uh, I'm gonna, um, any closing thoughts? Thanks for this, it was, it was enlightening. It was a good experience was learning. Good, you enjoyed learning it, thank you're you. welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Eric, thanks a lot for, for doing this actually, yeah. You're, you bet, Subod, anytime. You're welcome, Naresh. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Ashesh. You just never know. It was kind of fun. <laughs> was it kind of fun? <laughs> yep. It, yeah, it, it's really nourishing to me. And I appreciate that you said that, Krista. Thank you. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unmute everybody. And we're all going to say, let's see, I'm going to try to unmute everybody. Everybody unmute yourselves and everybody say goodbye. It's a lot of fun to do it this way. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Awesome seeing you all. Bye. See you again Bye. soon. Thank you. Thank you.